Happy Friday everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly sharing the biggest information and network security stories each week and sharing practical tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting March 4th, 2013. Let's start this week's InfoSec news with yet another cloud breach. Early in the week, we heard that Evernote, a uh, online cloud-based note-taking uh, provider, had a big security breach and they lost 50 million user credentials. The good news is uh, the passwords for all those credentials were both hashed and salted. Uh, so they're more secure than say just hashed passwords. That said, attackers can still brute force this hashed database. So as usual, if you're an Evernote user, you definitely want to go change your password. I believe Evernote is forcing users to reset their password. But more importantly, if you're one of the users that still uses the same password on multiple websites, you need to not only change your password on all your websites, but I highly recommend you use a different password on all the different websites you uh, visit. If you're anything like me, you're probably getting really sick of hearing about Java vulnerabilities, yet I can't help but warn you about another Oracle emergency Java patch. Uh, during the week, Oracle released another Java patch to fix two zero-day vulnerabilities which attackers are exploiting in the wild. So if you use Java, you absolutely need to make sure to patch it as often as possible. On top of that, we hear that uh, malware authors have started selling a Java exploit framework kit. So this further goes to show that attackers are heavily targeting Java right now. We've also seen one of the Java exploits spreading in the wild has been digitally signed using a legitimate certificate. Uh, the certificate seems to be stolen from a Austin, uh, Texas based group called, I believe they were called Clear Result Consulting. Uh, so it's a certificate stolen from another victim and then used to sign a Java exploit making it seem more legitimate. Anyways, long story short, as I've mentioned in many videos in the past, Java is very dangerous right now. Absolutely keep it up to date if you have to use it. And if there's any way you can avoid Java, you should. Moving on to some interesting conference news. This week, uh, CanSec West is going on, a big security conference in Canada. And during this conference, they have a contest I've talked about every year called Pwn to Own. This is a contest where security researchers and hackers uh, can show if they can hack well-known browsers. And if they do, they win money. Well, Pwn to Own is pretty much done. It went through its two days, and every single browser out there was pwned, essentially. Uh, so there were flaws that were found against Firefox, Chrome, uh, the latest version of Internet Explorer, even the latest version of Internet Explorer running on Windows 8, even on uh, uh, the Surface Pro tablet. So every browser was uh, uh, exploited and, and hacked. On top of that, on the second day, attackers started to show new uh, Java flash and reader vulnerabilities that still help them to take control of a browser through drive-by download like flaws. So this contest uh, had a record result in that uh, the contest does pay researchers for their attacks and they paid out apparently $480,000 worth rewards for these attacks. So you should expect a lot of browser and browser-based plugin uh, updates to be coming as a result of this competition. In fact, both Chrome and Firefox have moved very, very quickly and patched uh, vulnerabilities found during Pwn to Own conference. I believe Chrome came out with version 25, which fixes some of the flaws found during this conference, and Firefox released 19.0.2, which fixed one of the use after free flaws found during this contest. So if you use Firefox or Chrome, definitely go get those updates. And if you use any browser, make sure to keep it up to date as often as possible. So let me end this episode with one of the concerning news items from the week, which was a story about the Department of Defense talking about nuclear uh, retaliation against cyber attacks. This story came out as an article from Gizmodo, who had found a document put out by the U.S. Department of Defense. The document was called Resilient Military Systems and the Advanced Cyber Attack. And this document talks about different ways that uh, the U.S. military and government can respond to cyber attack. 
But what uh, Gizmodo pointed out very concerningly was that the U.S. government repeatedly in this document talks about retaining the ability to do nuclear strikes against people as one of the deterrents for cyber attacks. I believe they, they say nuclear uh, 113 different times in this document. Uh, they do in this document talk about nuclear strikes should be last resorts, uh, the U.S. government should have other potential defenses including cyber attacks of their own, but it is kind of concerning to me to see them talking quite openly about nuclear strikes as deterrent for cyber attacks. On one hand, I'm very happy that uh, cybersecurity, information and network security, has started to reach an awareness level where governments and consumers, people that should be concerned with cybersecurity, are now more aware of it. But I also worry that hyperbole will drive uh, the, the sort of response to cybersecurity to an unreasonable level. Right now, we still have quite a bit of problems with attribution, figuring out who's really attacking us. It's very easy to hide on the internet. It's very easy to plant false flags. So I don't want anyone going crazy with their response to cyber attack, with strike back as it were. In any case, this is kind of an interesting and yet concerning document. It does prove that all our governments are thinking more about cyber attacks. If I were to control the future, I would prefer if our governments worked more on active defenses. I personally believe a lot of people are, are still resorting to legacy defenses, basic stateful firewalls, rather than layering multiple different types of security defenses, which also include more policy-like defenses such as visibility and awareness. If we actually uh, concentrate more actively on defending ourselves, perhaps we won't have to resort to such horrible offensive capabilities like nuclear strikes. Well, that's it for this week's quick information news security video. I hope you found some of the information useful. As always, please follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog to get uh, very up-to-date news on whatever's happening in the security world. You can also follow us on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.